Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about front mounted engines. Now often there's a differentiation between engines mounted just ahead of the front drive axle or just behind the front drive axle, but in this case I'm kind of going to be lumping those together and we're just going to be talking about front mounted engines in general. And so I'm going to start with overall and then we'll kind of go through some of the disadvantages and advantages of front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive using a front mounted engine. So overall, why might you want to use a front mounted engine? Well, it's going to leave you plenty of space for passengers. So when the engine's up front, you've got all of the rest of the car uh, with space to accommodate passengers or a trunk or something like that. Uh, whereas if you had a mid engine, you know, that can kind of intrude on that space. Serviceability. A lot of engines with the engine mounted in the front, you've got a hood which completely covers it and then you can pop this hood open and you've got tons of space to work on the engine which compared to a mid-engine or a rear engine uh, even, this could be quite a bit better than uh, as far as how much space you have to work on the engine and things around it. Uh, the safety of the steering dynamics. Front mounted engine cars are going to be more front heavy and this is going to make them more prone to understeering. This is generally considered safer than oversteering as if you're going to go off the road uh, and hit a tree, you'd rather hit that tree head on by understeering than oversteering and hit the tree on the side of the car where you have a much smaller crumple zone and you're not going to be as well protected from it. Now the downside of course is understeering isn't desirable from a performance standpoint or any standpoint really you don't want to understeer. Uh, so the weight distribution, these cars tend to be front heavy uh, and so that's kind of a downside of it. So let's talk about front wheel drive front mounted engines and why you may want to use that as a design. Well, you're going to have initial traction, so the weight of the engine is going to be resting on the driven wheels, and so that means the maximum force you can accelerate with from a stop is going to be pretty good because you've got most of the weight of the car resting on those two front wheels. You're also going to have improved traction in uh, loose surface conditions such as dirt, snow, and ice because you've got that weight resting on those driven wheels, and so the maximum force you can accelerate with is fairly high, and so it'll minimize the amount of wheel slip. These are also going to be the lowest weight option as you don't have uh, basically that much. You don't have a drive shaft going to the back or things like that. It's uh, fewer parts and it's all up front and this can overall decrease the weight of the car. So not only is the weight less increasing efficiency but the drivetrain losses because there's fewer parts and the parts are short and lightweight. The drivetrain is fairly efficient and you're only driving these two wheels. So all of this combines and you're going to have a cheaper cost which is another advantage. Uh, seating, finally, this goes back to this passenger space because the engine's up front and you don't have that drivetrain hump from a drive axle going towards the rear, then you have plenty of space for your passengers. And ease of driving, typically those are pretty simple cars to drive. Uh, worst case scenario, generally what's going to happen is you're going to understeer, which is considered to be a bit more safe than oversteering. So let's talk about some of the disadvantages of a front wheel drive front mounted engine. So load transfers from the front to the rear uh, under acceleration. So as you're accelerating and you have that load transfer to the rear wheels, you're removing the load on the two front wheels and thus you're decreasing the total amount that you can accelerate, the maximum potential that you can accelerate. So you could experience some wheel slip once you start accelerating hard uh, just because that weight's going to transfer to the rear. Also a big disadvantage of uh, front wheel drive is that the front tires are doing all of the work. They're doing the accelerating, they're doing most of the braking because most of the weight is towards the front and as you brake the load transfers to the front and they're doing all of the steering. So because they're doing all of that work you can only do one of those really well at a time or a combination of them somewhat well. So when these tires get overloaded by doing too many things at one time it's going to lead to them slipping thus understeer can occur. Also you've got a poor moment of inertia, basically all the weight towards the front of the vehicle so the vehicle wants to resist turning, it's not as agile or stable because of that. And finally torque steer for higher powered front wheel drive vehicles, uh, you're going to see the wheel kind of want to turn to one direction and turn the vehicle which obviously isn't desirable, you want to go straight uh, or not have it have any influence on your steering. So why might you want rear wheel drive? Well, you've got load transfer under acceleration, so as you're accelerating with a rear-wheel drive vehicle, you're putting more load on the rear tires, thus increasing the total amount of grip they have for acceleration, so that's one benefit. Also, you can achieve a fairly good weight distribution with these rear-wheel drive front-mounted engines. Um, one of the things Corvette does is they place the transmission at the rear along with the differential and all that, 
Uh, and basically what they do is they're able to achieve a 50-50 weight distribution, which from a lateral grip point of view uh, can be pretty much ideal, basically because you're evening out the load between the tires uh, and allowing for maximum potential grip. Also, you're distributing the tasks between the front and the, and the rear. Uh, you've got your steering handled by the front and your braking, but remember, because you've got more weight towards the rear, the rear is actually going to be able to brake more uh, than it would in a front-wheel drive scenario. Also, you've got your rear doing acceleration, so you've kind of split up the tasks that the car needs to achieve between the two front and rear uh, tires, and so that's ideal from a basically grip point of view. Now another benefit is you may have a tighter turning radius with this rear wheel drive because you don't have the drive shaft influencing the turning up towards the front on the two front wheels. Uh, you don't have that interference of the drive shaft affecting how much those wheels can turn. And then finally if you're into drifting, uh, having less weight on the rear and basically easing the ability to break those rear tires free, this is basically a good setup for that. Now onto the disadvantages of a rear wheel drive vehicle with a front mounted engine. Um, these are going to be more prone to oversteer which isn't ideal for going around corners. Basically you want a, a neutral steering vehicle that isn't going to have the back kick out and these can tend to have the rear kick out especially because there's not that much weight on it so if you put down too much power it's going to want to slide out. Um, also you're going to have more drive train losses versus a front wheel drive as you've got this drive shaft going all the way back and that's got inertia and weight added to it. Um, and so added weight as I mentioned versus front wheel drive. Also for the passenger compartment you're going to have this drive shaft hump which may or may not influence uh, basically how much space is in the rear seats or something like that um, because that drive shaft hump is going to exist. Uh, also cost versus front wheel drive there's more parts here and it's a bit more complex so it is going to be a bit more expensive. And finally grip on loose surfaces. Because the majority of the weight is on the front of the vehicle, most of the time, you know, you can get a fairly even weight distribution, but versus a front wheel drive vehicle, which has the majority of the weight on the driven wheels, this necessarily does not. And so that's decreasing the maximum amount that you can accelerate on these uh, loose surfaces. So it may be fairly easy to spin the tires on loose surfaces such as dirt, snow, or ice. Okay, moving on to all-wheel drive with a front-mounted engine. What are the advantages of this? Well, basically because all the wheels are driven, all the weight of the vehicle is always on driven wheels, so the maximum acceleration is pretty much always possible. Now, your weight distribution is going to be better than that of a front-wheel drive vehicle, and it's going to have great acceleration on pretty much all road surfaces, once again, because all of the weight of the vehicle is on all of the driven wheels. Now, what are the disadvantages of all-wheel drive? Uh, and there are fairly big disadvantages. You know, you've got a significant amount of added weight from all of these added components. Uh, and you're also going to have a less efficient system because you've got all these wheels driven. So you have drivetrain losses from all of the wheels rather than just two of them. So that's going to affect it. Uh, turning and braking with a lighter vehicle is always going to be better pretty much. So, you know, that's a sacrifice you're making by adding all this weight. And you also are going to have that drive shaft hump influencing the passenger compartment. And because, of course, this is a more complex system, it is going to cost more. So, you know, big trade-offs here. You get a great amount of acceleration, but at the same time, you're increasing weight and decreasing efficiency. So, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.